I honestly do believe that it is the hard times that really define us. You know, the adversities are really the gifts. If you were at that time where you have to make a tough decision and, you know, you you feel like you're in this turning point, right? Like just embrace that and just know that it's one of those defining moments. Hi, and welcome to Audio Life, where we record your story in your voice. I'm your host today, Carrie Purcell, and today I get the pleasure to speak with Monica Kreschmer, who many people know as the CEO of Universal Women's Network or the voice of the Women of Inspiration podcast. In our conversation today, we're going to learn a little bit more about the people, the places, the events that help to form and inform the person Monica has become. It'll be a chance to share some of your stories, Monica, some favorite memories, some wisdom that you've gained along the way. So welcome and thanks for joining us. I think the last time that we we actually spoke outside of some emails was on your podcast. Um, so I'm looking forward to turning the tables and hearing all about you today. So you grew up in Calgary. Tell us a little bit about your childhood. You know, I'm just going to say I've always been sort of just a little bit different. You know, when you walk into these reunions, everybody have groups. Yeah. They all gravitate to each other. For me, it was like I was bouncing around to all of these groups because what I realized in that moment is that even though I felt like I never truly belonged, it was because I belonged everywhere. I just had a really eclectic group of friends, interests, but I always really felt personally that I never fit in anywhere. Yeah. I realized that that was my power. I actually fit in everywhere. I love that. There are so many people I think that spend, you know, their childhood, their their early career trying to fit in. And what you did without uh, intentionally meaning to is you stood out, right? You weren't fitting in, but you stood out. And standing out makes you a leader and it makes you versatile and it makes you understand all of these different types of people. And somehow between your, your family, uh, where you were born with your siblings and the people that we went to school with, or just the spirit of who Monica always was, you just stand out and you're a leader. Um, and it gives you a superpower, as you said. As you were growing up, did you get a job before you went on to you know, education and your career? Did you have a first job when you were younger? My first job was garbage, Carrie. <laughs> I was 12. I did a really good job picking up garbage. So it was the perfect job for me. I was attentive mm-hmm. and no matter what job I did, yeah. I did with pride. If we go back to my childhood, we worked before we played. It mm-hmm. was just one of the philosophies um, that was ingrained in me since early, early childhood. Like, And I thought that was kind of mean, you know, <laughs> for many, many years. As I grew older, almost my detriment really sometimes mm-hmm. is that I can never actually play until my work is done. Mm-hmm. And so work before you play and through years of interviewing so many women, I've heard so many incredible stories uh, of hardworking women that have succeeded. So. Yes. So much respect. I love how um, your first job gave you that, you know, that same life lesson that you really had at home. I actually, I can relate on the the father doing your work first part. Um, you know, we definitely were not allowed to play until the, the, the work, the schoolwork, whatever it was. If you were lucky, it was just your schoolwork. <laughs> and you touched on this, but I, I remember, so by high school, I picked academic courses and I tried to fast track. I didn't pick any electives, right? They just seemed unnecessary to me. But I think the risk there, which you touched on was, was making room for some play, for some relaxation, for, you know, building that in still, right? So yes, valuing the hard work, but finding ways to reward yourself for all of that. And maybe that's the next question is how do you make time for, uh, you know, whether it's, whether it's health, whether it's entertainment, play, how do you make time for that? I'm going to be very transparent with you. I'm a worker bee. When I get into something that I, I want to accomplish, Time is evaporating in front of my eyes. And, you know, there was a time Mm -hmm. in my life where I had no choice. Like I had to do the work. I would probably work seven days a week for several years. Um, As I went through my divorce, there was no balance. There was a lot of stress. There was just work. And, you know, thank God I was conditioned to work. You know, my son, um, you know, as a single mom since he was seven months old. Mm. So, and then, you know, by the time he was 14 and I think it was just during COVID actually coming out of COVID 
honestly, this is so fresh. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you've got to take care of yourself in order to be where you need to be. Yeah. You've got to take care of your body and you got to do this now. It's so important. You know, I love to walk. Mm -hmm. I used to run. I'm a happy girl. I like to be near water yeah. and I like to walk by it. I like to mm -hmm. be on it, be in it. Um, nature is freeing for me. If I get any extra time, it's going to yeah. be, I feel like a new human, if I can get out there and enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. So you talked briefly about your son. Tell us how motherhood changed your life and, and what that experience was like. I wanted to be a mom. I never thought that I would be a single mother, yeah. but you know, that's how my life unfolded. And uh, so motherhood did change me. Um, I didn't realize how strong I really was until I became a mother, how nurturing or protective I was until I became a mom. Yeah. He was my sort of strength, why I worked so hard. It all goes back to that little being that you want to build a better life for. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. So I know that's going to come back into the, the conversation. You know, you talked about how, how, what a hard worker you are, how, you know, having that baby, that responsibility and motherhood encouraged you to work even more. So tell us a little bit about work, like what educational choices, what opportunities uh, came up through your career until where you are today? Tell us how that evolved. I was not an exceptional student at all. I took a gap year on my own, wow. regardless of the consulate saying, girl, you should not be here alone. Um, mm -hmm. I suggest you go back to Canada. And I just, you know, I dug mm -hmm. my feet in and go, nope, I saved up my money. I'm here. I'm staying. And I end up having lots of adventures. Wow. There's nothing really that scares me a whole lot, to be honest. Um, I didn't get into this program at Mont Royal School. I was, I had explained the lighting store. I, for several years going through high school, um, I then worked in another company, which was a design company um, in Calgary that they poached me to come work mm -hmm. for them. Then I went back to school and interior decorating and mm -hmm. that didn't work out. So I'm like, do I really need that? I'm mm -hmm. going to just start my own business anyways. And so that's when I started my business and I worked for contractors. Mm -hmm. One of my first um, projects was actually when some really you know, well-established designers in the city go, Monica, can you take this on? I'm like, wow. I was like a kid in a candy store. Yes, I would love to. So anyways, I've got clients already. I'm just going to go start working. Yeah. And I did that. Um, it was called distinctively yours. And I still have clients cheering me on and have followed me on my journey. This is really interesting because in about the time that I started my business, I needed a part-time job working for WestJet mm -hmm. and I stayed with WestJet for about 13 years. I started wind down your decorating mm -hmm. because I thought this travel thing is really fun. Yeah. I honestly had a hard time. I always felt like I needed to be working on their schedule. I went back to school and decided to take entrepreneurship. Yeah. You know, I, I lasted a year in that and go, you know what? This is boring. Um, I can't do anything. So I, I left and continued to build. Yeah. And so my journey is kind of back and forth. Yeah. All I knew is if I wasn't happy, I would pivot. Oh, I love that. I, I, so, I mean, you know, a little bit about my background. I don't feel like I took a straight path, but I, I think it's so important that people have these, these models of different paths, right. Of different ways that you can start a career. Like you, you, I don't know if you felt forced into entrepreneurship. My guess is that it was actually comfortable for you because you went out and, and one of the first things that you did in your adult professional career was build your own company and get contracts and get partners that were putting you on, on contracts. Right. And then to your, uh, as you told us at the beginning, I mean, your, your hardworking nature and your work first nature, you know, if that wasn't quite making ends meet, you went and got some other side work, right? And, and work that became, maybe became central to you for a lot of other people. That was probably their whole, their whole world, their career. But for you, it was a side hustle supporting the work that you were doing on your own and that mission that you were on. I think that that grit and I think that leadership and that stand out part of you that doesn't have to fit in everywhere is finding your way, um, but taking those qualities that you learned from your father and taking those through to make sure that you're going to be successful. So I, I mean, to me, it's all, it, it's perfectly clear, even if it felt like it zigzagged or if other people are like, sorry, you did this and then you did what? 
So no, I, I hear you. I hear the this, this strong leader, Monica, coming through in all of that. So now that we've heard about where your career started, some of the pivots along the way, tell us about highlights. And I'm also going to ask you challenges that you faced. Mm. You know, it's kind of interesting because when I talk about the berries and challenges that we face as women, I mean, I honestly, Carrie, I never thought there wasn't anything I couldn't do. I never had a mm-hmm. feeling that there wasn't anything that I couldn't do. I mean, point example, go try and get that into that interior design program door closed. I'm like, screw it. I'm going to do it myself. Right. Mm -hmm. Like even though there was challenges, I'm a glass half full person. So I never dwell on the challenges. I always look for a solution. Right. And so when you ask me the challenges, you know, like, I don't know, like nothing really jumps out at me because I've always just Mm -hmm. really been resourceful and I'm a very, supreme optimist like there's always got to be a solution for something and if something is a setback there's always going to be a positive or super lining so for me challenges are opportunities for growth Mm -hmm. period i love that drop the mic absolutely we're done drop the mic that's it we're ending on that (laughs) and now for a word from our sponsors ready to share your stories and life philosophy or capture those of a parent or grandparent. Or maybe a corporate package is right for you to build connection across your workforce and add value to your clients. Visit audiolife.io today to learn more. Our listeners will get 10% off using discount code GIFT10 and order number Audio Life Podcast. Audio Life, where memories find their voice. Yeah, no, I love that. That resonates so strongly with me. I know there might be somebody listening who's like, well, it's all about perspective, but I mean, that's the perspective to take forward and that's what's gotten you where you are and and built the life that you have. So thank you for that. So tell me about today. You founded, you run the Universal Women's Network, you run a podcast, you have brought women together to publish a book, you're publishing another book, you've won awards, you've helped to judge awards. Like, tell me about all of that. Okay, have we got like, and by the way, there will be a book for me. I, I have had a book in the works, like in my mind, like there's so many, I always see that there's, um, you know, so many chapters in our stories, in our books. Yes. And I've always had this name. It's called my seven year journey. And mm-hmm. that was really a defining moment in my life when I became a mother and I got yeah. married late in life. The clock was ticking right? I knew I wanted to have kids, get married. And you know, I don't think we talk enough about the gut, the intuition, when that gut Mm -hmm. intuition is telling you bad, (laughs) very, very, very bad. Like, don't do this, (laughs) right? That gut. And so I didn't listen to my gut. I proceeded to get married and I had a baby right away. And, you know, I loved being pregnant. I, you know, embraced that whole process. I felt like the most amazing human being to have this honor of kind of creating this being inside me. Um, he was yeah. born and it was seven months later that I, I left my marriage with my son. Um, it was not a matter of choice. It was, I needed yeah. to leave. My life depended on it. And if I didn't leave, um, I may not have been here to talk to you today. So yeah. um, that was a really defining moment. And then I spent the next seven years of my life focused on getting out of that marriage. And I was only married for 15 months, Carrie. I had a mm-hmm. seven month old baby, married for 15 months. And I had 22 days of trial, 4,800 hours of litigation, 56 plus court appearances, which I was attending at every single time in the first seven years of my son's life. I had five people on my hand in that time. There was mm-hmm. no building business. I had, you know, is kind of the rest of my life is on pause. I was nowhere on social media. In fact, yeah. I'm serious. There was five people that knew what was going on in my world. I mean, it wasn't like I was completely um, not anywhere, but I mean, I was a full-time mom. I was a full-time 
court person. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. That that was all yeah. in my world. And there was nothing left over for me at the end of the day. Um, thank God for my work experience yeah. or my ethics and my resilience um, in my sort of, you know, problem solving, like in my optimism, yeah. I got through that period of time that actually tested who I am as a woman, mother, yes. as a daughter. And I'm actually very, very grateful for the adversity now, not in it. Yeah. I remember in it going, how do I possibly get out? Like, there's no other option for me. I have to do the hard work. I have to figure out a way around it and, and try and give myself and my son this positive yeah. experience, right? And so I've remained always happy for no reason. Like my life was yes. crumbling around me. I was working the hardest I ever did, yeah. but I have this little being that I loved so much that I wasn't willing to do anything more than to come out the other side. I didn't even know what mm -hmm. that other side was. Um, I just knew that one step in front of the other. Dark, I yeah. wasn't staying there. And so I saw a light at the end of the tunnel of all my litigation. And I was sitting in a courtroom one day with my lawyer. And we were adding up the days that it would my trial would be. And this was, you know, close to the seven-year mark. And they added up all of the actions. <laughs> this is family law, of course. It was made history. And they said like 136 days of trial for family law. Like they, that's how what they started calculating it out by the rules of the court. Mm. Thank God it only ended up being 22. By the way, yes. 22 is unheard of. Johnny mm. Depp had 21. Just let's put oh. that in perspective. Yeah. So I thought that was like, oh, great. And I thought, oh, my God, my lawyer is going to leave me. She yeah. is going like 22 yeah. days trial is massive prep, not only for court time, but prep time. And like, hello, I'm a single mom. I work like, I, how am I going to get through this? And she just looked at me. I remember sitting in the courtroom that day and she looked at me and she goes, I don't know how we're going to do this. We're going to just get it done. And I honestly thought I'd grow old with her and gray. <laughs> I'm like, are we ever going to separate? But you know, the light at the end of the tunnel for me was at the end of that 22 days of trial. Um, I knew that I'd be tested for a bigger reason. Mm. And that's when, you know, she went her way. And now that came to a close. Mm -hmm. um, what am I going to do with myself? Yeah. And for me, that was a huge defining moment. Because I'm like, here is where I'm going to start to rebuild my life yes. for myself and my son. I'm going to build a woman's network where mm. every woman's voice belonged. Based on the shared value system, courage, confidence, commitment, and integrity. Those were my core values that mm -hmm. got me through all of that mess. And those are the values that are going to bring women together. I don't want to see silos. I want to see yes. inclusiveness. So I went out of the gate preaching inclusive cultures and an inclusive network where every woman's voice belonged. People laughed at me. They're like, inclusivity? No, focus, Monica, on one type of woman. Mm -hmm. That never resonated with me. Yeah. And I knew that I wanted to build a network where it was like connect, learn, empower, and celebrate. And I knew my celebration pillar of my company mm -hmm. would be Women of Inspiration Awards. Mm -hmm. And finally, I would have an opportunity to celebrate. I talk about this. Yeah. Finally, I would have a way. Oh my God. Like, yeah. Of celebrating someone that really stepped up for me yeah wow. that makes sense that's so special and so oh my god like i got emotional like yeah. i go right back to that carrie yeah. and so you know i celebrated my lawyer on september 26 2015 oh. she stood on my stage the stage that i built yeah and i've got manjeet minhas mm. beside me this is just when she started the dragon's den yeah i have legal aid of Alberta because let me tell you I was in front of their board a lot of times to like a lot they give 10 hours per file that's 160 hours I had 4800 it put that in perspective 
And so I had Legal Aid of Alberta, Manjeet Minha, I sat in my lawyer and the deputy mayor on the stage. Mm -hmm. And as I'm standing on the stage telling just a glimpse of my journey with my son sitting there, so it was like yeah. very filtered. It was like deer in the headlights. People were listening to my story. Yeah. And they're like going, I have a woman of inspiration. Yes. That I'd like to celebrate. And yeah. that was the beginning of a woman of inspiration. But as my lawyer turned the page, it was September 26, 2015, that I was honoring her. And it was September 26, 2007, that her EA had found that was the paper that we first started working together. Oh, wow. Creepy. This is on purpose. Yes. Like everything that we do. Yes carry in life is for a reason or a purpose. Every person yes. that you meet is for a reason and a purpose. I am a firm believer in that. Yes. There is no, there's no situation. There is no thing that we're going through in life that isn't to teach us a lesson, yes. to build our strength, to build our character. It's all part of our story and our journey. Yeah. And so we just have to be open to receiving it and to pay attention to it. Yeah. And so as I stood on that stage, that was the beginning of Woman of Inspiration Awards. So that was a very significant piece because as I'm telling the story, Deer in the Headlights, people are like, oh my God. Yeah. Like I looked out and I'm like, now I have an awards to create. And that was the very first one. And over the past, we just celebrated. Um, I'm just coming off of last week. Um, we celebrated 80 um, women. Um, and a handful of support hers. And I yeah. also started support her to yes. the allies that are champions for women. Yes. And so, so important. I started that five years ago. And so on that stage, we had, you know, performers and youth dancers, and we celebrated the achievements of women from North America. Yes. Oh North America goodness. with men and women together. Yeah. And top companies. We had like Dell and Gilead and CIBC and, you know, we have so much like TikTok was in the room and, you know, we yeah. have like Danone and, you know, uh, some incredible, incredible, really wonderful companies. But that has taken me 10 years to build. Yeah. You know, it's really interesting because I've worked and I've been laser focused on that very beginning where it's like we are a inclusive network where every woman's voice belonged and based on a shared value system. And so the partners that we are with now are truly aligned with the values of inclusivity, advancement of women. They want to be men and women in the room. Like we evolved and we did a rebrand at year 2019. There's a whole other background story with that too, but it's always been men and women working together. And now it's my son has actually really kind of been my, again, the reason why I wanted to make sure that men were welcome to yes. the conversation. I want the good guys. I want the allies yes. to be a part of that. I want role models for men The support hers. And so, you know, as I evolve and where I am, like my story very much is everything about the Universal Women's Network, Women yes. of Inspiration Awards, support her. And all those top companies that are, you know, walking the talk, leading by example, the yes. ones that are doing lip service, no, thank you. The ones that are actually, um, yeah. you know, leading by example, those are the ones that are, we're partnering with. Such an incredible story. I know the work that you're doing at Universal Women's Network is amazing. And I knew, I didn't know the details. I knew there had to be something that drove you to build this. And it's just an incredible story. I know there's more to it. When the Seven Years Journey book comes out, I will be thrilled to read it. I thank you so much for sharing that with us today. If you had a piece of advice for young Monica, somebody somebody who's trying to figure out their path, maybe they're an entrepreneur, they maybe they're actually in the midst of going through that hard time, they don't know they're going to come out triumphant, what piece of advice would you give them? Hmm. Gosh, that is such a you know, I I honestly do believe that it is the hard times that really define us. Yeah. You know, the adversities are really the gifts. And yeah. I don't think that we go through, uh, and I know myself personally, when we're at the highest of highs, we don't make those decisions that are sometimes the hardest decisions to make. The decisions that have to be made are usually at the most uncomfortable times of our life. Yeah. And so I think that probably my advice is 
if you were at that time where you have to make a tough decision and you feel like, oh my God, my life sucks. I just, I don't know which way to go. And, you know, you, you feel like you're in this turning point, right? Mm -hmm. Like just embrace that and just know that it's one of those defining moments, yeah. right? I, I just think really sit with that going, this is a defining moment of my character, yeah. of my strength, of who I am as a person. And just know that this moment is fleeting. This mm -hmm. will become part of my story. This will become part of my next chapter in my book. And I will get through this. And there is another level, right? I talk to women so many times and you know, that zigzag in that road, it's like mm -hmm. everything happens for a reason and a purpose. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're in the opening show at the awards, the song on purpose came on. Mm -hmm. I actually have a song on purpose and I'll maybe we'll put the link in there because it's yeah, really, please do. Yeah. you write your own story every single day. And so I guess my word of advice is if you're in that time, embrace it and know that it's a defining moment. What incredible advice. Thank you for sharing that. As we wrap up, is there anything else that you wanted to share that we haven't touched on? You know, I, I've always said that every woman has a story. Your story doesn't define you. It empowers you. Mm -hmm. And I can't say that enough. And I really, I am so incredibly proud of women in our network, um, the relationships that we've built. Carrie, you've got an incredible story as well. We've had some really great, great conversations. I yeah. am so honored and I never would have in a million years thought when I was 12, right, that I'd be doing the work that I'm doing now. And it's never been easy. Yeah. Just saying, sometimes I'm yes. like, why the hell am I doing this? It's so much work. Nobody knows, right, yeah. the belt, the challenges that I face um, yeah. because there's no roadmap for it, right? But I, I feel like I'm here um, on purpose, you know, working and and creating and amplifying the voice of women that really need to be amplified. And I also, you know, would encourage the men that are champions for women yes. to really step out. Allyship is really huge for me. And yes, I have a women's network. I, I love championing women, but we should not be doing it alone. We need both yes. parties together together. We need our companies. We need an, a full-on inclusive network to move women yes. forward. And so, yeah, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit of my background, my story. It seemed like it was all over the map, I don't by think the way. It was. I, <laughs> There's way I more. Know, right? There's way more. Um, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. No, it was such an incredible story, Monica. I can't thank you enough for being here. There were all kinds of things you brought up that I want to ask more about, but I just, it was just so impactful to hear, you know, what you call your seven years journey, how the Universal Women's Network came about, what you've been able to accomplish. Um, you've filled this podcast with life lessons, with wisdoms, with advice. I didn't ask you explicitly about as many of them as I typically would, because you, you have them for people all throughout. It's always a pleasure to speak to you. And, you know, when we do, when we record, these life stories, these audio memoirs, it's a moment in time, right? And your story isn't going to end here. And I can't wait for the next conversation to hear about the next chapter. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Carrie. It was always a pleasure looking forward to it and stay tuned for that book. Yes. Links to your music and when the book comes out, links to the book uh, in the show notes as well. Awesome. And links to the network in nominating women yes. and men and top companies. Well, again, Monica, thank you so much for being here. You've been listening to Audio Life. Um, if you like the conversation that we have, please like and share. Thank you so much, Carrie. If you like what you heard today, consider recording your own Audio Life private podcast or giving one to a loved one for a unique and memorable gift. Today, Audio Life listeners will receive 10% off using discount code GIFT10 and order number Audio Life Podcast. Also, remember to rate our show and subscribe so you'll never miss an episode.